So we will see constant flux linkage theorem according to which the flux link to any coil due to any effect is same just before the excitation and just after the excitation. What is the excitation? Excitation could be the open switch closing or closing switch opening, maybe the introduction of voltage source, introduction of current source. Such things may be considered as excitation. Now you have voltages and currents which can change suddenly in no time. Such as if you just close the switch, the amount of current or amount of voltage that is developed across a particular load or a current flowing through in a circuit just changes suddenly like if the initial current was zero just after you close the switch the current starts moving if initial current was zero final current say if it is 5 milliampere this change occurs in no time so this is the time duration which is almost is equal to zero so the voltages and currents can change suddenly in no time but not the flux linkages so let us say this is a coil all right and if there is some flux linkage through it if some flux is existing in this particular coil because of any effect maybe the current flowing through this particular inductor or some external current and we want to change this flux maybe the current flowing through this coil changes so ultimately the flux linked to this coil should change but this change does not occur in no time this change does not occur in zero seconds like it does in in case of currents and voltages so basically constant flux linkage theorem is trying to tell you this very thing that any flux links or any flux linkages or any flux changes does not occur in zero time why this happens this is because of the inertia of stored magnetic energy in the inductor so basically the amount of change that is going to occur or amount of flux that is going to occur depends upon the stored magnetic energy already in the inductor so if there is zero amount of energy initially in this particular inductor that means no current is flowing even if you close the switch and current I starts flowing through this particular inductor. And now for this I, if the uh, flux is psi, the change from zero to psi does not occur in zero time. The excitation is I, so just before the excitation, the flux was zero. And just after the excitation, even if current I is flowing through the circuit, the excitation would be the flux linkage should be zero. So this is constant flux linkage theorem. We will see in detail how this flux linkage theorem affects the currents and voltages in the circuit. But first we will see the mathematical proof. Consider that the circuit is made up of voltage sources, different resistance drops and an inductor which is giving voltage in the form of D psi by D or D lambda by DT. Okay. So these are the combination of voltage drops. Now to find out or to give the mathematical proof of the flux not changing in zero time, we have to do some mathematical manipulation. So we have done integration for every term. So if you do integration for every term, you get R constant and I dt and D lambda by dt into dt is equal to E dt and we have taken limits from 0 to delta t. Now what are we going to do is we are going to solve this integration and then we are going to make delta t tend to 0 so that we find what happens in 0 time to every term. So now if you put limits t tending to 0 then you get dt is equal to 0 you are just remained with d lambda or say delta lambda where limit t is going to 0 and in this term as well so dt will be going to 0 so basically these two terms become 0 but as this term does not depend upon t anymore because this t 
and this DT and DT are cancelled, we have only delta lambda in our expression. So limit of T tending to zero delta lambda is equal to zero. That means delta lambda is equal to zero. This is what happens when you take T tending to zero or say delta T tending to zero. You get delta lambda is equal to zero. That means when the time duration is almost is equal to zero, the change in flux is also zero. So flux remains same just before excitation and just after the excitation. Let us see the normally transient example what happens exactly while in a circuit. So this is voltage source V, this is resistance R and there is an inductor N. This is DC battery. So and when we close the switch at T is equal to zero, some current should flow in the circuit. But before there is no current, before we close the switch, there is no current flowing through the circuit. So basically there is no flux in this inductor. There is zero stored energy in the inductor. Now initial current is equal to I is equal to zero at T is equal to zero minus. Zero minus is just the moment before you close the switch. Now let us see what happens when you close the switch just after the moment. When you close the switch, the current should start flowing through the circuit. You know that the current, the current is given by V divided by R plus J omega I. Now, because this is a DC circuit, there is no frequency omega. So this term ultimately becomes zero. So the current that should flow in the circuit is V upon R. Alright? So, if somebody would have asked you, what happens just after you close the switch? What happens to the current? Our normal answer would have been, current V upon R should flow through the circuit. But no, this does not happen because just we have learned about the constant flux linkage there. The flux through L does not change suddenly. So, this flux initially was zero. Even after closing the switch at T equal to zero plus, the flux will be zero. And to keep the flux at zero, there shouldn't be any current flowing through the circuit at t equal to zero plus. All right. The current which is expected V by R attains its maximum value V by R after some time. All right. So the graph of current with respect to time goes like this exponentially. So initially the current is zero and even after you close the switch, the current is zero. This is how you treat the RL circuit with DC source. So this is the application of constant flux linkage theorem to identify the currents just before the transient and just after the transient. I hope you have understood. I will meet you again when you call me back. Thank you so much.